Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at responding to button clicks in Android. So this time I've got my phone connected via USB, via an actual USB cable, because wireless debugging for some reason stopped working. It's a whole adventure every time I run Android Studio to see what form of connection between this and my phone is actually going to work, but never mind. And I've created the default application using just a blank activity, like in the previous tutorials. And what I want to do now is add a button, which when clicked will change the text on a text control. So the first thing I'm going to do here is get rid of this preview, which I'm not going to use. And at the moment, I don't need these arguments to this greeting function really. So I'm going to get rid of those for the moment as well. Let's delete the parameters here. And this text control, let's create a bit of text just here. Let's say var, because I'm going to change it later on rather than val. So var greeting equals hello. And I'm going to put this right here. And since we've no longer got this modifier, I'm going to get rid of that. So now we've just got a text control. And if I run that, we ought to see the text on my phone here. Okay, there we go. It does say hello up there. It's a little bit difficult to see, but it is there. Let's zoom in on this a bit. There we go. So what I want to do is put a button on there as well. And as we've seen, we need some kind of layout control if we're going to have more than one thing on here. So I'm going to create a column. Let's have the round brackets and then curly brackets and the closing curly bracket can go down here. Let's indent that a bit and add the import for column. I'll leave this text control right here and then let's create a button control. So round brackets and I need the curly brackets as well because to get a text on a button, you actually use a text control within the button control or within a button composable function, I should say, strictly speaking. Let's copy this one and paste it within the curly brackets of button here so it basically functions as the last parameter to this button function here. And I'm going to import button here. And we need some kind of on click attribute. Let's set that to just a kind of empty lambda expression for the moment. So just open and close curly brackets. I could make this text control a bit more compact while I'm at it. And to make this look less horrible, let's just space things out a bit. So I'm going to add a modifier to column, I'm going to specify a modifier argument. I'll make that modifier dot fill max size. And let's put this round bracket down here, put this argument on its own line. And then I can also add horizontal alignment equals alignment dot center horizontally. And also vertical arrangement equals arrangement dot center. And I'm allowed to have a trailing comma in Kotlin with the arguments if I want. And now we've got something a little bit more presentable. So there's a bit of text that says hello and there's a button that says hello. And the question is, how can I make it so that when I click this button, it changes the text on this text control? So here's something that's not going to work. What I could try doing is setting this greeting variable right here in on click to some other text. So at the moment it's set to hello, let's say clicked. And the text on the button itself, I want that to be something else. Let's say click me, exclamation mark. So this doesn't work, but let's run it. Okay, it ran itself, it refreshed itself. I'm never quite sure whether the automatic refresh is gonna work or not. Sometimes it seems like it does, I have it turned on, and other times it doesn't. I have to click this button up here, I don't know why. But now you can see the button says click me and the text says hello. Now these composable functions like column, text, button, greeting and so on, they form a kind of tree if you look at it. So we've got column within greeting and within that we've got text and we've got button. Now you might think that if we want to change the text on the text control, what we have to do is somehow get a reference to the text controls text and then update that. But that's not quite how it works in Jetpack Compose. Instead, we need to basically trigger a kind of redraw 
or recompose of what we've currently got in such a way that when the redraw happens, the text is just drawn differently. So it's a little bit of a different way of thinking about it to what we had in the past, where with the XML-based system, you sort of thought of controls as just sitting there and you could kind of grab references to them and alter them without actually redrawing the whole control. In this case, it's more like we have to actually redraw the bits that we want to change. And that's called recomposing. So when you first run these composable functions, Jetpack Compose is going to create a composition, which is the stuff that we basically see running on the phone. And the only way to change what you see on the phone is going to be to do a recompose. And a recompose involves recreating this stuff, or at least recreating the bits that have changed. So you have to have some way of telling Jetpack Compose that certain things in here have changed and the whole thing needs to be recomposed and those particular bits have to be changed. And the way that we do that is with something called mutable variables. So to achieve this, we need to use two separate functions together. Let's get rid of this. And I'm going to say var greeting by remember and then curly brackets to supply the last argument to remember. Mutable state of, and to there I'm going to supply the text that I initially want the text to have. Let's initially make it say hello. Then I'm going to hover over remember and import the remember function. And if I hover over this red underlining, I also have to import operator state.get value. And if I do it again, I've got to also import set value. So there are several different ways of doing this, and this is just one of them. So the mutable state of function creates a mutable state object that contains, in this case, a string. And we need this mutable state object to tell compose that when this changes, we've got to do a recompose so that we actually change the particular controls that are affected. And that's not enough by itself. We also need remember here. The point of remember is just to remember the value produced by whatever we do here. So it's got to remember this mutable state object. Because after all, this is a function. It's only going to run once. It's not a piece of XML. And we've got to have some way of remembering state within this function. And that's what we use the remember function for. And we also need mutable state of to tell Jetpack to do a recomposition for any object that's been affected by a change of this mutable value. And best practice in Jetpack Compose is to try to remember the states of things as closely as possible to where you actually use them. So in this case, I'm remembering this state actually within this composable function. And the by keyword just says that the value of this variable is going to be supplied by this function. Now let's try clicking the button and we'll see what happens. So now we can see, if you can see that, that the text has actually changed to clicked when I click the button. And by the way, the styling here is coming from this My Application Theme set of styles, which is an automatically generated Java file that we can actually find in our project. But we're going to take a look at that later on. And it's giving me a warning here that inner padding is not actually used, although it's not an error that stops the program actually running. We should, in general, pass the padding on to our composable functions. That parameter originally looked like this. We had modifier, modifier equals default value modifier. And then here we can say modifier equals modifier dot padding brackets inner padding. And let's spell that correctly as well. And then I can get rid of the warning. So probably I should really put that in. It is, according to the documentation, the right thing to do. So that's it for this video. It seems pretty complicated, but once you've typed it out once or twice, it does start to feel a bit more natural and it's not really that difficult. Until next time, happy coding.